The purpose of Free Thought Forum is to be vigilant to the encroachment of religion into government and to educate the general public as to what a free thinker is. My thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them. No hunter can trap them. No person can deny. Hello and welcome to Free Thought Forum. I'm Catherine Farringer, the producer of this show and your host for this program which I have called Humanism 101. Lately, or rather not lately, for some years now, the uh, fundagelicals, as I call them, have been saying dreadful things about secular humanists. Oh, we're very, very evil people with horns and tails and things and wicked, and we want to press our religion onto little school children. Well, today I have two secular humanists with me. I have my friend Benny Dean, and Stanley Grayson, and they are real live secular humanists, and they're here to talk about humanism. So welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Now, Benny, I understand you started this chapter, and how did it come about? Well, I had been reading the uh, Free Inquiry for several years and uh, enjoyed it very much and always wished that I had someone to discuss it with. And uh, finally, I called uh, New York, the office of the publication, and uh, told them that I thought that uh, perhaps we could start one in San Antonio, uh, that is a group of people, and ask if they had any ideas. And so they said that they would conduct a survey. So they sent a survey out with the next publication, and all of those who were interested in uh, establishing a group uh, responded. And then he sent me those responses, and I got in touch with those people. And we had a meeting, and um, that was back in, I think, June or July. And we've been meeting ever since. So we how many, have a how many names were on that list? Uh, Just... There were about 80 some odd people <laughs> in the San Antonio area. 80? That includes Kerrville and uh, Kennedy. And See, the there are areas. free thinkers. There are humanists in this town. Yes. yes. And Stanley's another one. So Stanley's one found, of the ones you, that responded. He was one of the first ones, mm -hmm. wasn't he? Sure was. And uh, a very invaluable member now of this newly formed chapter, which is called the San Antonio Secular Humanist Association. Secular right? Humanist Association of San Antonio. Yeah, oh, backwards. That's why I like it. That's why that says it all. Well, in a little right. while, we'll run that up on the screen so people will be able to get it right. Uh, since I'm so dyslexic, I can't get anything <laughs> straight. <laughs> Well, Stanley, uh, now that this thing is going, or is it going, has it oh, sort yeah. of yes, the, it's going. It's we've, beginning we've, to shake we down a little bit? We meet on a regular bit. basis. We have our bylaws, and we've elected officers. We have dues-paying members, and uh, Tim Madigan is coming from New York um, this next weekend to um, give us some ideas about where we go from here. Well, I'm excited to talk to Tim because uh, he's the one that's uh, also, he has a million jobs. I don't know how anybody that young can do so much to be, he's assistant edi editor of the uh, free, uh, free Inquiry, is he not? Yes, yes. And I think he goes to school, I've heard. I've heard that he's working on a PhD uh -huh. in uh, philosophy. And then he is also the head of uh, what, the Robert Green Ingersoll Memorial Fund or yes. this, this uh, house that they're trying to repair. Yes. Mm hmm So he has oh, been. Well, Stanley, Stanley was elected to office, wasn't it? Was, didn't we sort of uh, yes. arm twist him a little yes, bit? Yes, he'll be our he, next president. Uh, <laughs> and what position do you hold, Stanley? In well, there? I'm the vice president, and she's the uh, president. That is pretty important. I've got the two most important people in the whole chapter. Well, how about that? Uh, I was really surprised to hear from Danny, Benny and very, very happy because I've been struggling for two years to get my organization going, which is Free Thought Forum. And about what we've done so far is uh, five of us are active and the rest of them occasionally will come and, and meet uh, for something social. But it's been kind of hard to... Uh, to do all the uh, things that I do, like the television program and getting people for it and um, writing a million and one letters to complain about all the church-state violations that occur in this city, as you probably know. Did either of you happen to notice all the pretty little um, Catholic church banners hanging on the lampposts on your way into town? I'd heard about them. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't notice, but... Uh... I'm glad you know. <laughs> I'm sure that it does a lot of good. Mm -hmm. It's made me wonder, too, about uh, other um, uh, signs that they have. I, have you noticed everywhere, every city I've ever been in, they have signs directing you, you know, two blocks down to the Lutheran Church or three blocks up to the Catholic Church or so forth and so on. 
And those are all parked on city property. I wonder, sometimes I think about things like that. One thought leads to another. The banners, for instance. You must not get too agitated about that. Well, I'm the, glad you have time to do those things. I don't. <laughs> well, the trouble is, it sounds so petty sometimes, I know, but what's happening here and has happened, there haven't been any humanists that were outspoken out of the closet. There haven't been any free thinkers, avowed atheists that have stepped out of the closet to say, now we do have this little thing in the Constitution about separation of church and state. And so you, what you do is you start agitating and, and calling attention to these things so they'll become more conscious of it. It's not that I consider this the end of the world or anything. It isn't. There are more, there are more important things. But one has to sort of take on the problems as one comes across them and address them as well as one is able to without being able to hire an expensive attorney uh, or <laughs> oh I had something marvelous for you it was in the paper oh where is it where is it will y'all tell me more about Tim Madigan's trip while I look for my this marvelous cartoon that I've got that of course I could not absolutely um, ad lib for love nor money but Tim is coming on the... So Tim is coming on Friday the 16th, I believe that's the date, and we have um, oh. meetings set up for Saturday, and, uh, and then we'll do some things on Sunday. He has to leave Sunday afternoon late, uh, but we intend to utilize all of his time and pick his brain and find out what we in San Antonio can do right. to uh, make, a, make us a really viable organization here and very active because there are so many areas that we're interested in that, would, that we think that we could uh, make a difference in. What in particular have you thought about your your activity of uh, as a as a group? What sort of things will you address? Well, it, go ahead, Stan. Go well, ahead. it's largely undefined at this point uh, because we're a fledgling organization, and there are studies underway to try to decide uh, where we could uh, uh, be most influential. Uh, obviously, our thrust is. Uh, uh, toward a realistic and scientific approach to life and uh, uh, we would do uh, as much as we can in the area of education along those lines. Well, I hope that the, some headway will be made. I've, all I really dream for is the day that, that people who don't, um, the, who don't believe in that higher power are not sneered at as being odd and and weird and all that and it's, it's the other way around really but it um, in lacking the cartoon here is something just you will treasure this the bible made her do it a woman was locked in jail because she said the bible forbids her to pay her attorney <laughs> you better watch those bible readers i tell you you're not going to make much money <laughs> isn't that a riot yes well you know you can use that that as an excuse for it avoiding or doing anything. I mean, just think of the people that go out and kill people and say, God made them do it. Um, I know. Well, the, the Free, um, Freedom from Religion Foundation has little stickers that you put on Bibles, and it says, uh, you know, a warning. It's a warning label that uh, the contents of this book may be dangerous to your, your uh, mental and physical health. And it, it is true, all that thing people have actually, where it says, uh, if your right hand offend thee, cut it off, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. And people have actually done those terrible things. Mm -hmm. Well, those who are inclined to take it literally, I think, are very, very dangerous. So, I mean, it could, uh, they could do a lot of things and I just think, attribute it to the Bible. I'm sorry, I, I think right. uh, uh, most people don't really think too deeply about those things, and they're culturally uh, reinforced uh, by some uh, suppositions about the way this country came to be, beliefs that uh, are not necessarily true. Uh, a fairly typical and popular myth is that this nation was founded on a belief in God and, and, uh, and it's a religious nation, quote. Mm -hmm. At the time of the uh, Constitution being signed, 7% of the population was all that was affiliated with any organized religion. That means that 93% of the people at that day in, quote, the Age of Enlightenment were not affiliated with any church. What so happens? this is a popular myth. <laughs> it certainly is, and one that keeps being repeated and repeated. And if you repeat it often enough, 
it will be believed. I have a terrible problem with the people that write letters to the editor to that very thing. This country was founded under God, and this was, it was founded with the Bible as being the guide for the writing of the Constitution. Well, eek, I didn't know the Constitution said anything about stoning people to death and stuff like that, which the Bible does. That's right, and then there's some other things. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, New York City uh, uh, once was New Amsterdam uh, when it was originally founded. It happened to be a fortuitous uh, harbor situation where the fur trade could take place. And uh, the Dutch settled that city, and a, a great uh, commerce was developed at that point on the south end of Manhattan Island. But it was 14 years before the first church was established in oh, New what, Amsterdam. What a blissful time in history that must have been. <laughs> so the, the, these myths, uh, they're, uh, they're very popular, and they're reinforced culturally by the things you're talking about, like three blocks down to the Episcopalian church or what oh, have yeah. you. It um, makes... Well, it comes to be an accepted fact when it's really not. I know that we were talking earlier about the uh, coins the, in God we trust on the money, and that has not been around all that long. Uh, McCarthyism was what got everyone so stirred up, and the idea that they, they married religion and patriotism at that time, and <laughs> that was a disastrous marriage as far as I'm concerned. I'm trying to bring about a divorce is what I've got in mind. Let's, get, let's stop this nonsense. <laughs> But that, that is so true. The, the people repeat and repeat and repeat. Uh, and they, but the unfortunate thing, every time they do something like that, like they decide they will go ahead and put in God we trust on the money or under God in the pledge, that then a generation passes and these people that have grown up in that generation think that's the way it always was. But nobody ever defines God. Right. Well, that's the truth too. For heaven's sake. I mean, sakes. when you go to uh, um, like this lady's in a court of law all the time, then and, and you have to uh, swear on a Bible uh, that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. You don't swear on the Bible. You don't. You don't say that anymore. You don't swear on the Bible. Anymore? You swear to tell the truth. So help you okay. God. You don't. But you still have to say, oh, you don't. Good. In the okay. movies, they're always uh, no Bible involved, but the the words "so help you God" uh, are involved. And uh, you want to say, well, what's your definition of God? Yeah, I would like to know, because the one that I keep hearing about when they talk about the feet of God and the hand of God, and I keep thinking, gee whiz, big, huh? Big, big. Well, to some people, that is Jesus. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just whatever their definition that is. That Trinity so. is a pretty tricky thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I've yes. always thought so. But let's tell people a little bit about humanism. And it is divided into different, uh, well, it's not really divided, shall we say, but there are those who pick a title over another one for reasons such as secular humanists. Then um, some people just define themselves as humanists. They don't bother True. with the secular. I don't know what well, the implication is there. In, in the States, the American Humanists were one of the oldest organizations. They were organized in the 1940s. Uh, world, uh, worldwide, uh, I think they've been in existence about 20 years, uh, just an international humanism. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, free inquiry uh, is uh, defined as secular humanist, and they did that about nine years ago just to get away from any uh, definition of a religion because they do not want to be considered a religion. And in fact, the American humanists um, have one aspect in that they they call themselves religion, that they are defined as religion, so that they can perform certain rituals, um, like well, marriages. and Yeah, uh, well, we do need something like that, but it's a shame to have to affiliate it with a religion in order to do it, don't you think? Because well, that's because uh, that's required by the, um, um, some of the laws require that they be performed by um, persons with a with a religious background. But and why? Uh, you couldn't just get married in a church and not go to City Hall and sign all those papers and things, could you? I mean, no, no, you have to have a, you have to have a license, okay. but then uh, a minister has to, a minister or, um, say, an officer Let's, of the court has to perform the ceremony. Yeah, well, how did that happen? I mean, the minister thing, I can understand the justice of the peace or something like that, maybe, or, but why can't we have things our way, Stanley? 
Why can't we become? Why can't we become uh, secular humanist, whatever uh, ministers? Or I don't like that word. Let's use another one. Well, if, we if you use the term minister, you see, then you have uh, the you criteria. But if you don't have to be a minister, well, then of course anyone could do it. But um, okay, so the secular, so the secular humanist free inquiry, separated sort of from from the human. Uh, they they are they're, friendly, they're two, they're, they? two, they're two separate organizations. I subscribe to both of them. But uh, I, just, I subscribe ones. to everything. You do. <laughs> Except okay, I um, even get. Uh, uh, I'm now I'm a focus on the family. I'm getting their literature because I, <laughs> I sent off for a tape. Uh, Dobson interviewed uh, Dick Thornburg, and I wanted to hear what Dick had to say to Dobson. So I sent off for a tape, and now I am on the list, and I get uh, all the focus focus on the family. We got their Christmas catalog the other day. <laughs> oh, lots of fun tapes that. you can send people. Yes. Okay. Then after the the humanist, secular humanist, and then their and now they're talking something about the Jewish humanists. Have they formed their own? Um, I'm not sure that they've actually formed, but there are some, um, there are some, uh, or a section that refer to themselves as a Jewish humanism. I, I, I still don't understand that because um, I, the, the way it was told to me was that it was the tradition, I mean, their traditions that they wanted to preserve within the framework of humanism. Is that? Is that well, as of, I understand I it, it, uh, it was a group in uh, uh, the Los Angeles area that had a, uh, a religious uh, uh, classification so that they could perform passages of rites, I mean rites of passage, I mm -hmm. got that backwards. Uh, dyslexia, we're both dyslexic. <laughs> and, um, um, and there is a, uh, a vote taking place right now in uh, uh, the Humanist Association uh, that that deals with absorbing those people uh, and doing away with another part uh, of the, the humanist group so that they can retain the ability to have these uh, rights, uh, but as a kind of a separate entity mm -hmm. Not, within in the overall words, umbrella operation. Yeah. Well, I think that would be better. I know that the humanists did make some mistakes. They've admitted that they made some mistakes when they uh, they took their tax exemption through, I think, a religious... Uh, well, was that a, was a small group. Oh, that wasn't, wasn't the entire group. Oh, okay, okay, right. That's, that's what, what this uh, reorganization is all about. Mm -hmm. Because there was a, a reaction to the idea that humanism uh, could be quote, religious. Well, there is a group I know in that film, um, the tape video that uh, Isaac Asimov did, I think he talks about religious humanists. And that leaves me sort of, I, don't, I, I need to review that film again and find out what what exactly it said about them. I don't remember much, but what would religious, well, I expect it would be just religion without too much dogma, but why don't they become Unitarians? I'm just great for the Unitarian Church. I love it. It's, it's really grand. It's well, I think it's just, it's just a matter of definition if somebody thinks it's their religion, quote unquote. Yeah. Well, then but then that gets us in all kinds of trouble all the time for, for the, for the fun, fundagelicals saying that we're teaching our religion in their, in their public schools. We have as much right to teach ours as they have to teach theirs. I know, theirs. but ours isn't, it's not the worship of some higher power. We don't have a God. Uh, we don't uh, have prayers. We have goals and ideals and all those wonderful things. Where are all those fun things that, that humanists believe, which are, are really beautiful? Um, and yeah, here we are, some of the things. Okay, an affirmation of humanism. Uh, there are some really nice things. We believe in supporting the disadvantaged and the handicapped so they will be able to help themselves. We uh, attempt to transcend divisive parochial loyalties based on race, religion, nationality, creed, class, or ethnicity, and strive to work together for the common good of humanity. I can't think of anything more uplifting than the affirmation of humanism and the what is humanism. It, 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 uh, humanism. Um, humanism is in tune with new technological developments. Humanists are willing to take part in emerging scientific and technological discoveries in order to exercise their moral influence on those revolutions as they come about. I cannot imagine how anyone in a so-called religious context could attack such noble statements and such uh, as these. It's well, I think it would be but just we from heard them do it, didn't we, Stanley? Yes, you uh, went to we this certainly did. Uh, <laughs> we, we were at a. You're referring to oh, yes. a, 
a so-called seminar that mm. was held a couple of weeks ago. It was much more sermon than it was seminar, mm -hmm. and there was no discussion or question and answer period. Uh, and uh, we were painted uh, as being uh, very much of a threat to his uh, rights to uh, 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 practice his religion and uh, raise his family and uh, all of the other uh, evils that we do yeah, in I some know. way or so, another. So I don't bad. know. So bad. I don't know uh, where he got all of that, but it was uh, presented as fact. I don't know. There's something, I think, maybe it comes from the early days. They've never got over the lions. Do you think, I mean, throwing Christians to the lions, I mean, all that persecution and everything. I think, here's something I picked up at a, a garage sale, oh. uh, a little booklet on secular humanism. It cost $2. I didn't pay $2. It was free. But I want you to be impressed by uh, who wrote the introduction. The introduction is by Senator Jesse Helms. <laughs> Does that give you a kick? <laughs> the most dangerous religion in America by Homer Duncan, whoever Homer Duncan is. But Senator Helms said, I urge you to invest the necessary time in pondering this thought provoking analysis. I haven't read it. Of course, when I saw it, it was anti. <laughs> I wasn't much interested. <laughs> but there you are. Those guys stick together. And Jesse's back in again. Well, they probably are threatened by anyone who um, uses reasoning as opposed to irrational. Yeah, you're supposed thoughts. to have that leap of faith and just just trust. Just mm -hmm. trust. Yeah, well, they, they could not stand that type of an inquiry. I'm it's afraid. a daring way to live. <laughs> yes, and we don't go out of our way to threaten them, but no. apparently we are being taken that way. Well, as I say, they enjoy, uh, I find, they enjoy uh, waging war. That onward Christian soldiers is mm -hmm. really ingrained. And uh, if they haven't, now they've lost their communists, the evil empire. That's mm -hmm. sort of dissolved before their very eyes. Well, they can ply the, the fear and guilt trade for quite a while. Yeah, they're good at that. I always have been. Yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my objection to it. Is I hate to see them indoctrinate children into that hell, fire, damnation type thing. Robert Ingersoll was trying so hard. He thought by now, a hundred years later, that we would be away from all of that. Mm -hmm. But he was wrong. Well, he underestimated. Ignorance. Yes, the tenacity of Jesse Helms and people like that. Oh, dear. Well, I had an idea for one of your projects, I think, for your chapter. There is um, a, an ecumenical center for something. It's out at the medical center, and I gather it's a ministerial type thing that has many, it's ecumenical, right? Many religions that, like these awful people that run around when you're sick and you're throwing up and they want to tell you Jesus loves you. Um, I have a terrible time. I don't know about you, in hospitals? Oh, yes. Ah, uh, Ed, Benny, same thing? Yes. Ugh, they do. And they don't have any uh, sense of decency. They just come barging right on in. I think they're voyeurs. I don't know how you define it, but it, they are a pest sometimes. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought that maybe we ought to go drop by the ecumenical center and say, if you have any free thinkers or atheists or agnostics or whatever who sign up to be sick, to be in a hospital, <laughs> <laughs> that we would be happy to send a representative from the humanist or the free thoughtist forum to, to visit them and cheer them up. Well, Wish we'll look well. into that. I think that's a nice project, yeah. don't you? Possibly. I don't know. I think we maybe could spend our time doing something more meaningful. <laughs> oh, I think that's terribly meaningful because I think wherever you can put a foot where all those other feet have trod over the years and made it their territory, like anybody's hospital room is mm -hmm. fair game if you've got your collar turned around backwards. Um, I just, um, I think that's embarrassing, an embarrassing intrusion, and, and they have the nerve to not even knock. Yes. I'm familiar with that. So, well, what are some of your, uh, the, what, what would you say would, would be some of your number one priorities as a group? Well, I would like to see us become more active in the community so that we're recognized yeah. for as our good group. deeds and the right. things that we are mm -hmm. doing so that everyone recognizes that we don't have three horns or yeah. whatever they think that humanists have and that we are an alternative to people who uh, have this great need for some kind of religious dogma because we have our own um, 
you know, high code of ethics, very high morals, and uh, we um, look at the world, the entire world. I mean, we, we consider ourselves members of the universe and citizens of the universe. And so we're interested in environmental protection and um, uh, children being free from uh, the dogmas of uh, some of the religions that would impose their their views and so that they can be uh, healthier from a psychological standpoint. Uh, we're just very humanitarian, whatever that, uh, I mean, all that that encompasses. We we believe in humans, we believe in life now. Mm -hmm. and, and taking care of people and caring and now, fearing. not putting it off till later. And we also believe uh, that if the problems of the mankind are going to be solved, they're going to be solved by humans and not by some supernatural being. True. I'm always amused, uh, not amused really, that's hardly the word, but when someone has been, say, missing and they are found and they are ill and they put them in the hospital and they do all sorts of wonderful uh, technological things, the medical field is just all out, everybody is doing everything possible. Possible. And then the, the mother or the father or the husband of the victim says, I prayed and look what God did. And I think that's a slap in the face to all the doctors and nurses and the hospital team that work so hard to, to save this person, to all the people who looked for the missing person, to, to everybody who contributed to the, the good result. Guess who gets the credit? That's that the way it works. Doesn't seem right to me. And that's, that's what I meant a while ago about the cultural reinforcement. Uh, well, we, I wanted to run your address up on the screen, uh, and I hope they're, they're doing that so that people will know how to get in touch with your, your organization in case they want to join. Because I haven't been inundated with, with the pleas to join mine lately. I haven't had a call, and I haven't even had a crank call since last February. Isn't that mm -hmm. amazing? But I think, you know, that to me shows progress. It shows that they are maybe beginning to accept me as a person, annoying maybe at times, and maybe a little abrasive, but not as a real, uh, a real threat to their well-being, which I certainly am not. But they certainly make me a little nervous. But, and then some of the um, um, magazines, too, I thought we might, might show a, um, a um, free inquiry. And, and I went to the... Uh, Ted Turner, the humanist. Can the camera come in and show these? Good close-ups on the Free Inquiry and the American Humanist magazine. And I went to the, the Ted Turner thing. That was great. He was wonderful. Oh, I was hoping I'd get to give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation after that <laughs> terrible dinner. Oh, it's enough to kill a horse. <laughs> I don't know where they get those awful meals at those conventions. Really, they're just terrible and cost a fortune. That's all I do. Um, Where's the next convention going to be? Uh, which one? For Freedom from Religion mm -hmm. Foundation? It's going to be in uh, Madison, Wisconsin um, next year, next October. Because the reason being, we now are people of property. We have a free thought hall. There is an actual building, and it's right on the city square, right across from the Capitol. And it's... Uh, an old building. It's over a hundred years old, I believe. Very good. Uh huh. Isn't that Wonderful. nice? Yes. It makes you feel good to know. It's like I can see how these people like having their churches, so they have church suppers and things. We won't be having that, but but we have a place to go, and there's a library. They have a wonderful collection of books, and uh, and I think I'm being told we're out of time. Can you believe that? Is it true? Is it goodbye? For now, from Free Thought Forum, see you next week. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to Duke or Dictator. No person can deny, Deacon Duncan Sin Fry. No person can deny Deacon sin fry.
And should tyrants take me and throw me in prison, my thoughts will burst free like blossoms in season.